Welcome back. Today we're going to be taking a look at Stevie Smith's 1957 poem, Not Waving But Drowning. It's a small little poem, and it can be a little confusing at first glance, but in all my years teaching poetry, this poem tends to be one of my high school students' favorite poems, so we'll explore that together today and try and figure out why. Nobody heard him, the dead man, but still he lay moaning. I was much further out than you thought, and not waving, but drowning. Poor chap. He always loved larking, and now he's dead. It must have been too cold for him. His heart gave way, they said. Oh, no, no, no. It was too cold always. Still the dead one lay moaning. I was much too far out all my life, and not waving, but drowning. So the first thing I want to talk about in this poem before we dive into the meaning is the music of it. And I think when you read it, even just once out loud, you, you can tell there's some, some rhythm and pattern to it, but it can be hard to pick up. So I did the rhyme scheme for us here, and it starts out kind of simple, A, B, C, B. But then you notice that that repeated line, moaning and drowning, the I-N-G, gets picked up in the second stanza in larking. And then dead and said rhyme. And then we almost get this parallel this mirrored image in the final stanza of moaning and drowning, rhyming again. So it's a very interesting rhyme scheme, and it's not really a sing-songy or pop song uh, approach to the music of it, but it certainly has this almost kind of um, hypnotic little rhyme scheme where you, it's like a chord that you can't figure out what chord it is, but you know it's musical somehow, and I think it's a very creative approach to it. Now, getting past the rhyme scheme, one of the things I like to tell my students to do in this poem is think about what punctuation has been taken away. Because if you read the poem a couple of times, uh, you might think that Stevie Smith actually made a mistake, that she didn't include some punctuation marks that grammatically should be there. And we'll talk about why that is. I don't think she made a mistake. I'm almost certain it was very intentional. But take a second and think about what punctuation marks are missing. Okay, if you need more time, you can pause, but we're going to move on. Did you say quotation marks? Because this poem is actually a conversation between two people. The dead man's words, I was much further out than you thought, and not waving but drowning, and the crowd's words, poor chap, he always loved larking, and now he's dead. It must have been too cold for him, his heart gave way, they said the they being the crowd surrounding the dead person. So you have this sort of odd conversation from beyond the grave, and, and what does this all mean? Well, you've probably noticed that in your mind's eye, in your mind's eye through the imagery of the poem, that waving and drowning are similar motions, but from far out, they can be easily mistaken. And I always talk about how important it is to know what every word in a poem means, especially a short poem. And that certainly is true in this one, because if you're not British and not a little bit older, you might not know what larking means. But larking is basically a word that means goofing around. So the crowd believes that this guy loved to goof off. So it would make sense that he would just wave when he's out there or maybe even pretend to drown, but was just larking around, you know. Um, but he wasn't. Right, And I think that's the saddest part of this poem is that middle stanza. Poor chap, he always loved larking, and now he's dead. I mean, they knew him, right? They, they know that he likes larking, and this is all they have to say. And that line, if you want to talk about line breaks being used well, the second line of the second stanza, and now he's dead. Cut off before it gets to the explanation for it. That's a wonderful spot to break the line, and it's a very powerful spot as well. Um, the crowd theorizes that it was too cold for him and his heart gave way, but we get another instance of the dead man's words in the final stanza. Oh, no, no, no. That repeated O oh sound throughout. It was too cold always, still the dead one lay moaning. I was much too far out all my life and not waving but drowning. So it's a metaphor in this poem. Not only did he drown in the water, but he was drowning for his entire life. Let's take a look at some of the themes presented here. I think a major theme you could talk about if you had to present on this poem would be miscommunication. And the lack of the quotation marks actually, I think, are intentional because it mirrors the confusion about how the dead man 
died and how he lived his life. They thought he was joking around, but we're told it was not a joke. His whole life he was too cold, not just when he drowned. And when Stevie Smith lets the dead man speak from beyond the grave, it's too late for the crowd. They don't hear him, but we do. So what can we learn from this person's demise? Well, this gets back to my introduction about high schoolers really feeling attached to this poem. I think in high school and, and in the rest of life as well, you can notice that the people that goof off, the people that are the jokesters, the people that are always trying to make others laugh, they're just as capable of feeling sad. And sometimes they're trying to cover up something. Not always. I was a, a goofball most of my life. Still am. <laughs> but sometimes we use humor. This is everyone, not just jokesters. But sometimes we use humor to mask real pain. And if we don't listen to each other, we can think someone's just waving at us, larking around when actually they're drowning. It's quite a message, one we can really carry with us. Okay, so I always like to talk about lasting influence. Um, there's many, many songs. You can check out the Wikipedia page. They're pretty niche songs, but there's a ton of songs that reference this. Uh, a couple films and short stories, including a documentary. Um, and one unconfirmed allusion in the Our Lady Peace discography. Listen to the song Clumsy and tell me what you think. I think it's a reference to this song, but I've never read an interview where they confirmed that or anything, or even anyone else who's theorized it. But you take a listen and let me know what you think. But I'm going to stop because I'm dating myself now. You all have a wonderful, wonderful uh, afternoon, evening, whenever you're listening to this. And let me know if there's any other poems or short stories you'd like me to talk about. Thanks and have a great day.